Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on Indian poetry in English. My dear friends, we have come a long way and perhaps we are in the last legs of our lectures. And uh, in this regard, today we are going to talk about a very important and a very contemporary Indian English poet whose name is Jeet Thail. Many of you, when you hear the name of Jeet Thail, suddenly some of the novels that made Jeet Thail uh, famous, you start thinking of was Thail or is Thail a poet as well? Because as a novelist, he has made a mark, he has established himself. But basically, Jeet Thail is a poet. And his poetry is quite contemporary because he raises some of the contemporary problems which actually need to be addressed and answered through Thail's poetry. Now, we Jeet Thail the man and we Jeet Thail the poet. But before we come to know something about Jeet uh, Thail, it is actually time that we came to know about uh, the condition, about the situation uh, in which Jeet uh, Thail uh, came to be Jeet Thail. What actually were uh, these situations? How and or uh, what made Jeet Thail a contemporary Indian English poet? Now, Jeet Thail, uh, before uh, we come to know about uh, Jeet uh, Thail, it is actually time uh, that we knew uh, the socio political conditions which were prevalent uh, during Jeet Thail's time. It is already said uh, that the two world wars affected the literary scene too much. And in this regard, uh, we find uh, that Jeet Thail's uh, poetry represents the age that he was in. It was actually an age in which majority of the poets started practicing, started practicing individualism. They started thinking of the contemporary problems of life. They also started uh, thinking about where the world was going to and they also were sandwiched between skepticism and rationalism. The contemporary scenario not only in India, but uh, on the global level was full of several problems and in this regard there were uh, many youths and many people who often took uh, a retreat to drugs and despair. An air of disillusionment was also prevalent and in earlier days when we talk about uh, poetry, we find poetry was of a different sort of order. There used to be a sort of pattern, there used to be a sort of order, there used to be a, a sort of attraction for several things, I mean external nature and all. But then after the two world wars, poetry actually uh, became very inward. Brokenness, fine, fragmentation, alienation from family and religion, these happen to be the themes of modern contemporary poetry. Now is the time that we get introduced uh, to uh, the poet Jeet Thail. Jeet Thail was born in 1959 in a Syrian Christian family in the state of Kerala. He had his early education uh, in the nearby towns, but then he switched over to uh, foreign lands where he did his masters in fine arts from Sarah Lawrence College. Uh, then he also had the opportunity of studying in Hong Kong and uh, then he was also a recipient of several grants and awards uh, from the New York Foundation for the Arts, the Swiss Arts Council. 
the British Council and the Rockefeller Foundation. Actually, G. Thiel is not a man who can be confined only to one genre of literature. G. Thiel is actually a poet, he is also a novelist, he is a librettist, a person who uh, writes the text uh, for uh, the opera and G. Thiel is also a musician. That is why when we come uh, to have a peep in the world of G. Thiel's uh, poetry, we can find different sorts of images, we can also come across different sorts of you know uh, metaphors. We can also find different sorts of allusions in the world of Jit Thail. Actually, for the first time, uh, Jit Thail became famous when uh, his very first novel, Necropolis, came. That was in the year 2012. It was actually shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize, uh, and, and uh, that actually made Jit Thail very famous among the new and the contemporary uh, generation. Uh, Jit Thail was also awarded. Uh, Sahit Akadmi Award for one of his collections entitled These Errors Are Correct. It would actually be wrong to call it a collection because that is in the form of a novel, uh, but, but then uh, you can also find uh, that there are quite a good uh, number of uh, poems, fine. Even in his uh, poem, po poetical uh, works, we can find the pro poems are prosaic at times. Actually, early poems of G. Thiel bear a touch of him being a literary cosmopolitan because he writes of uh, so many American poets, he writes of other poets, he writes of uh, their plights, their miseries, and he also writes of uh, their uh, conditions in which they were living. But then, uh, in, in many of his poems, we find a personal voice, the persona of G. Thiel also working. In 2012, when he uh, wrote uh, a libretto, uh, which became very uh, popular, uh, Barber in London, but this was not uh, enacted in India because of some region or the other. So, this is uh, about uh, G. Thiel and uh, then uh, we come to his poetry collections, fine. In fact, the very first collection that came out uh, was uh, Gemini. It came out in the year 1992. Actually, after in 1990s, uh, the literary uh, scene changed a lot, and the poets and the practitioners, even of uh, novels who appeared on the literary horizon, uh, they had different sorts of subjects a sort of brokenness, fragmentation, a sort of disillusionment that we can find. So, a uh, Gemini uh, actually had uh, a different sort of emotion, it, it actually can be said that it has got some new areas of emotion and that is why uh, there are certain topics which have been touched upon in uh, Gemini and these topics are like drugs, drink, sex and even death. So, these are uh, being delineated in this very first collection uh, entitled uh, Gemini. And then uh, in 1997 came Apocalypse, fine 1997. Apocalypso is uh, a bit, uh, you, one can call it a bit uh, uh, mature uh, than the previous collection, where one can find uh, Thiel to be wittier, one can also find Thiel to be less uh, dependent. And in majority of the poems that Thiel writes, apart from uh, being some biblical references, because uh, uh, Thiel himself was from a Christian, uh, Syrian Christian family. Uh, but then uh, Thiel believed, Th Thiel's uh, uh, works uh, give us an inkling of his being a Roman uh, Catholic, because uh, at times it appears as he himself also, uh, because of his writings and the others, uh, seemed to believe that a sinner is closer, sinner is actually uh, closer uh, than a saint, fine. So, we, we find that and Thiel himself has also admitted. Uh, that he used to uh, be an alcoholic, an alcoholic, fine. So, then uh, uh, in 2004 came English, that is again a poetry collection and then came in 2008, these errors are correct, these errors are correct, that came in uh, 2008. Thiel also edited uh, some other works, namely the Blood X book of contemporary Indian poets. Uh, which came out in 2008, 
uh, then his 60 Indian poets uh, has become very famous where he has uh, uh, selected uh, many contemporary poets who could not get uh, more room in um, anthologies uh, of uh, poetry and then give the sea change and itself change 56 Indian poets fine uh, came out in 2005. Actually style was very much influenced by Dom Morass and uh, Dom Morass uh, himself had said uh, in one of uh, the prefaces he says uh, Thiel works his feelings out with care through colorations of mood rather than through explicit statements. So, Thiel can be considered to be a poet of moods rather than of explicit statements uh, because uh, one can find several references to drinks, one can find references to drugs and even in his novels uh, we can find uh, the typical scenario of uh, uh, Mumbai as a metro where all these uh, practices uh, are very much uh, prevalent. Now, what are the characteristics of uh, Thiel's uh, poems? Uh, there is an element of uh, surreal humor, then Thiel at times becomes uh, satiric and his uh, satires are very intense. One can find plethora of word plays uh, in the poems of Thiel. Uh, and uh, Thiel can also be considered to experiment with gajals and songs. He gave uh, uh, a new outlook to uh, gajals and songs. There comes a widening capacity to embrace the Dionysian. Fine, as we have already said that one can come across the attractions of drug, drink, sex and death, but uh, Thiel is not confined only to these areas. Thiel is a poet of passion, Thiel is, uh, Thiel is a poet of persecution, Thiel is a poet of love, Thiel is a poet of loss. One can come across uh, corruptions in human life also very much prevalent in the works of Thiel. Uh, now one can also find uh, Thiel who became famous as a novelist, but if uh, a uh, Thiel is asked about his attraction or his fascination for poetry. What Thiel says is very important, and he says poetry is like a very specialized language spoken only by the practitioners of lost art. Poets are priests of a religion who have been washed up on a dead planet. Poets speak only to the converted. When he says converted, what actually he means is those who appreciate poetry. They make very few new converts. Poetry is also more difficult to write than prose. And as regards his query uh, about uh, writing novels, what he means is that novels can help a person mint money, but maybe poetry cannot. And poetry has got a, a lower strata in this regard. So, even free verse has a certain formality that is why Thiel says uh, that poetry writing is a very complex and a difficult writing. One can find uh, Thiel's uh, poetic world uh, full of small poems, a majority of his poems are in the form of sonnets and guzzles, uh, but then he is not accustomed to writing uh, long poems, uh, but then some of the poems are uh, longer. Let us take some poems from his very first collection that is from Gemini because I want to show you how uh, Thiel's poetic art uh, progressed. So, this poem which has um, house of silence, house of uh, silence. Now, let us see how the poet appears to be in his early days as innocent like any other child and what he says growing up in that strange place we learn to laugh silently for fear that laughter too loud would bring about its own swift end. We learned a dread of Sundays and he says that if there was anything that we dreaded or feared that was Sunday, maybe because of some regions or the other that he would have to go to the mass since uh, uh, his uh, um, faith uh, uh, expected of him. If days had colors we used to say Sundays would be black, I learned to sing in the dark quietly without joy not without fear. So, I was frightened because I had to sing and modulating my tones so he would not hear who the big man sleeping with my mother in the back 
perhaps he is also conscious of uh, that those people who have been led to rest uh, may not awaken and may not feel it bad. They sleep still there, house broken now, house broken now. I make token sounds in a large unnoticed hand gone to the ground as you said in a loud and leprous land. So, this is actually uh, the beginning of uh, uh, Gemini fine, the, this is one poem from the beginning of this uh, Gemini and as he progresses towards the end where we can take uh, a different note where in the poem entitled a circular song what he says, what demon stalks this arid land, here now uh, Thyle actually talks of how there has been a decadence. Thyle has also been talking about decadence in religion and decadence uh, to uh, one faith that he belonged to. So, here he says, what demon stalks this arid land? How can you leave here, my poor soul, sleeping in semen, blotting his snot? What demon stalks this arid land? Slot in the slip, slip in the slot, even the sun steps like a thief. So, Thyle is very much conscious and when he finds here that they, one can find a sort of a change, change of note, change of reaction, change of emotion in the world of Thyle. So, we can also take uh, some poems from his uh, other collections namely Epocalypso uh, where he at times uh, becomes very realistic, he becomes very metaphoric, he at times becomes existential because uh, as a poet, he is a contemporary thinker. Of course, there may not be that much of musicality, but uh, Thyle was also consistently trying to bring a sort of music in his poem, but then he could not do that. He brought musicality in terms of the thoughts. Here we can uh, take some of the lines because it is very difficult to take majority of his poems at a stretch. Uh, now, take uh, some lines from uh, the poem Apocalypse. Uh, the poem is titled Life Lessons and uh, this appears to be a sort of experience as the poet says, people die in circles. The thing to hate is learning without what you have to unlearn. I mean there might be a certain practice or a tradition going on, but when you have to because you are of a different uh, uh, land, you are of a different time, people die heedlessly. The nuns you like reek of hollow heaven, stubbed or frayed, mentholated in grievance. Now, here also he takes a dig at what you see is not reality, reality is something else actually. And then towards the end what he says is a sort of eye opener where he says, children die, predeceasing parents, predeceasing parents, odd that we eat birds and animals growing like us. Here he takes a dig also uh, upon those people who eat birds and animals growing like us. Do we have the right uh, to eat them because they are just like us? Look closely and then he says look closely at rivers and trees. Look at the sort of uh, benediction that we have got. Look at the sort of uh, welfare that we get from these rivers and trees, but then people die that is what they do. Death is a sort of certainty, but then do we ever realize what we are doing are we really conscious of? Though we always talk of big things, we always talk of uh, grievous things, we always talk of faults, we always talk of what we should abide by, but we are not. In one poem after another, Thyle actually takes a dig. There is a poem entitled The Parrot of Happiness and then towards the end again the poet comes to the same that in this mundane world uh, the cry or uh, the slogan for happiness is actually futile. You know there are big opinions only, but then there is no rationality. So, Thyle in a way weeps at this sort of decadence. And then uh, if we uh, take an overall picture of what Thyle says through his uh, poems or what he tries to convey, we can find that Thyle very boldly at times experiments with the structure. If we have a look at the gajals and the sonnets uh, that uh, Thyle used to practice. The gajal as we all know that it is from an Asian origin, it is a poetic vehicle 
and and uh, in gajals we either talk of love or we talk of the loss of love and thiel's world is a world of suffering so this this uh, uh, genre is ideally suited to express pangs of love and separation and there is no wonder that we come across many of the poems by thiel which actually denote uh, not only the frustration in love but also the separation in love there there are t at times uh, the themes are not uh, properly related at times he becomes humorous but then you can find in plenty biblic biblical references because Thiel right from the beginning are uh, the way he might have been brought up he might have learned many uh, things which actually relate to his own religion but then was he really uh, faithful to it that is again a question uh, that poetry lovers like us have to explore in detail. Now uh, Thiel had also the opportunity of uh, uh, learning uh, through his uncle who had actually translated uh, Baudelaire and you know it, that was a great inspiration to Thiel. So in one poem entitled Malayalam's Gajal, Thiel like uh, many other uh, predecessors of him, I mean some of the poets who have uh, talked about uh, the loss of the tongue, Thiel also in this poem talks about the loss of the tongue. We can take some of the lines, listen someone saying a prayer in Malayalam, he says there is no word for despair in Malayalam. Sometimes at daybreak you sing a Gujarati Garba, at night you open your hair in Malayalam. To understand symmetry, understand Kerala, the longest palindrome is there in Malayalam. So if we look at the word Malayalam, it is a sort of palindrome, even if you reverse it, it will again become Malayalam. When you have been too long in the room of English, open your windows to the fresh air of Malayalam. So he talks about how people should revere a language like Malayalam. Visitors are welcome in the school of lost tongues. Someone has endowed a high chair in Malayalam. I greet you, O oh my ancestors, O oh scholars and linguists, my father who recites Baudelaire in Malayalam. And you know, Thail has a, a tendency to uh, mention his own name in every song or ghazal. And here he says, Jeet, such drama with the scrapes you know, write a couplet if you dare in Malayalam. It is better because you know here uh, Thail talks about the loss of the tongue and that is why he says if you can dare write a couplet in Malayalam. Now there is another poem, this poem is a longer one and the poem is titled Spiritus, Spiritus Mundi. The meaning is, you know it is a Latin word, uh, the meaning is the world is spirit, the world is spirit. Uh, many of you who have read uh, W. B. Yeats uh, might have come across this in his famous poem, The Second Coming, fine. Here uh, Thiel also talks about how he lived, where he lived, which places and that he gives uh, in the form of a poem. I was born in the Christian south of a subcontinent mad for religion. Warriors and gelots tried to rule it, a minor discipline carried his doubt. Like a torch to temple and shrine, I longed for vision and could not tell it. The cities I grew up in were landlocked, one a capital, buff with architecture, the other lost for months in monsoon. One was old, one poor, both were hot, the heat vaporized, thought and order drained the will, obliterated reason. I mean, my dear friends, it is very difficult to uh, talk about each and every line. I settled twenty and morrows, I became sad at twenty, is a town built by a patricidal emperor whose fratricidal son imprisoned him for eight years with a view of the tomb he built for his wife to remember her, I was ever conscious of my rhyme. Now here he actually talks of or he uh, refers to uh, some of the historical references where some of the emperors uh, built a sort of memoriam in honor of uh, their uh, beloved. And of the houses three inside my head in the streets, death in saffron or grain rode a cycle rickshaw slung with megaphones on the kitchen step. A chili plant grew dusty in the wind, in that climate nothing survived uh, the sun. So at times he also talks about the environment and uh, the poem uh, proceeds. I made a change 
And then he says, I made a change. I traveled west. I went to the western countries in time to see a century end and begin. What was that year? And then he says, I don't recall the summer of 2001. Did it exist? There would have been sun and rain. I was there. I don't remember. So at times he unfolds his own memory. A time before autumn of that year. Now 45. I have turned 45. My hair gone sparse. I am a poet of small buildings. The brownstone, the townhouse, the cold water, walk up the tenement of two or three floors, I cherish the sort ones still standing. So I am a simple poet only of a small buildings and all. And then he says, I recognize each cornice and still the sky's familiar cast, the window I spend my day walking to and from as if I were a baffled Mughal in his cell. There is a reference to the Mughal emperor all of us know. I call the days by their Hindu names, but myself by a Christian one. Fine. And the poem effort. Now, what are the characteristics of uh, this poem? The poet in this poem talks about where he lived, how he lived, where he went and what were the things that he watched in his childhood and so on. Fine. The poem may appear to be autobiographical, but there is a beautiful structure and the poet time and again talks about the urban life and nature. Now, uh, Thail's uh, wife Sakti Vat, fine, Sakti Vat, who actually left Thail and that had actually a, a very profound and a very sad effect on him. So, there is a poem entitled Premonition for Sakti. Premonition for Sakti. Uh, let us uh, look at this because this is a poem of loss. Gone and gone does not mean a thing. Look at the word play that Thail does. There is no change in the spelling, only in caps and in small. The world and we continue to be happy to eat our pig and leave. We sing their names against the same. We know someone waits where the sky and the sea tilted. She leans on light on a floor. The bridge between each and watch descends. Now there is a gap. The bridge between each and watch, the present and the past, too soon, sweeps them up like chimney dust, whose lips we loved, who were friends, when hands were hands that held us fast, our time of union. They reach to us, lost among the lost now, they seared minds stretched to the past, inconsolable mouths, slack with loss, not able not yet to let go of us. Can we really? But then it is only a sort of premonition. But then this premonition uh, actually turned uh, to be a reality because uh, Thiel's uh, wife left him, fine. She left, fine, for another journey. Uh, there is uh, another poem entitled Heroine Sestina where the poet talks about heroine and as I have been saying that the poet was also a sort of alcoholic and here in this poem he talks about the various names uh, uh, that uh, the heroine uh, the drug has got. What was the point of it? The stoned life, the chaste, distorted sort life, some low comedy with a cast of strangers, time is quest flat. The 1001 names of heroine chewed like a language, nothing now to know or remember but the dirty test. So it is uh, in a sort of, you know, it is a sort of experience of what. And the names snuff, death, a little taste, ha, pronounce it etch, sugar, brownstone, skag, the sit, gora gadi, china, you know, garad, god, the gear. I mean, these are all the names. And then uh, the poem comes, which comes back lovely sometimes. A ghost sensei, say that hard ache test back in your throat, the warm heroine drip, the hit, the rush, the whack, the stone. Look at the way, the description of uh, this, I mean the effect of it. To a thin white line, I am saying, I know, I know the pull of it, the skull rings time, so beautiful, so low, you barely hear it. Each this blind to toad test when you said, I meant it, we live like stones. You broke something in me, only heroin. Every now and then I retreat to it 
and every now and then I find and then finally says sober unknowing the happiness chemical blown from your system unable to test the world heroine without wanting its stone one last time. I mean as I have been saying that Thiel was such a poet who was not only a poet of love who is rather a poet of loss fine and uh, then poem after poem sometimes in the name of love sometimes in the name of separation. So, here is one poem where one sonnet uh, which is entitled separations sonnet. What are you doing? What improvised thing in a borrowed room? Your cell phone rings. It appears as if it is a sort of unfolding of the memory because uh, these are some of the poems which have been taken from uh, these errors are correct fine. I mean symbolically it may mean that what these poems say are correct. In a borrowed room look at the expression borrowed room your cell phone rings each ring measures the floor the rungs the way a lover uh, thinks about of your dream holding I ask how you sing and for whom but for whom are you singing whom are you composing to imagine the bed you are in the vertiginous smile that will break him the man whose roses bleed at your window the man whose roses bleed at the window at times the poet exaggerates also fine in a very exaggerated style and then he says to want is to wait to want is to wait as I do in the place I know my breathing loud and single as the room it is a smell of spider dust and old perfume each small thing lasts longer than the sewer that is life. I fix the remembered instant you on your feet singing seeking a river of salt from our shared overheating skin. So, very beautiful poem and that is why I was tempted to take it as uh, one for our discussion. So, there is a sense of loss, there is a sense of dream, there is an unfolding of the memory, there is an unfolding of the past days of two lovers who were united, but when they are gone still they have not been separated, but then this is a separation sonnet. Uh, we can take some of the poems from the uh, book of chocolate scents where he has uh, uh, composed poems on many scents and through that what he wants to say is that these names have to be revered, these names have to be adored. At times the poet takes a dig note out, but then in a way it is actually a sort of tribute and one of the poems entitled Saint Gandhi you see. Saint Gandhi, Gandhi he reverses Gandhi as a saint and he says of poor Bandar in darker South Africa saw the light when traveling by train wore only homespun gave up salt and sex so tragic a man who would split a nation fine. I mean there the poet takes a dig, but the poet also talks about what many of us at times think that this was a saint who split the nation into befriended apocalypse. I mean that was actually a sort of damage, a great damage and such a saint died with the name of God on his lips by whom sought by a man with God in name. Now, see he here provides two contrary pictures that one man whom we consider sent died with the name fine of God on his lips and then who sought him was also a man, a man with God in a name. So, reality has been portrayed but in a very satiric manner. Then there is another poem that is also on uh, the name of a saint, Saint Anthony, Saint Anthony of Padua fine and there he gives a rest, uh, 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 representation of what the Saint Anthony was of Egypt born in coma to Christians at 20 his parents died and left him plenty he gave it away. So, such is the nature of a saint that uh, even though born in a wealthy family and even when his uh, when uh, his uh, parents left a lot he gave everything and then what he did two decades alone in the desert and then followers a garden baskets 
patron of weavers, domestic animals, pets, healer of those poisoned by a god. Poisoned by a god. So those people who had a fungal disease, even they were embraced by this scent and they actually had a new lease of life. Now there is one poem which again I am very much tempted uh, to uh, discuss here and this poem is uh, in a way a tribute uh, to Aga Sahid Ali. We have already discussed uh, his uh, poetry over and then look as, uh, let us have a look at this beautiful song. Who among us will escape the hand of water? Now why I have taken this poem is that uh, Jeet Thail very beautifully makes a word play on the word water, water which has been used as the metaphor and every now and then when he uses water he has a different meaning. Who among us will escape the hand of water because water is truth, water is life, water is death, water is destruction, water is respiration, water is life giving, water is life taking. No cheek, no eye is dry in the land of water. Bolt tight the windows, the wind is fierce tonight. Read the collected works and all these collected words unsigned of water. All these collected words are unsigned of water and he says that the wind is fierce tonight so bolt your doors. Tomorrow my love will walk our bereaved city. We will walk our bereaved city. We will see what the streets understand of water. And then tomorrow we can think of what our streets understand for water, understand of water. Someone is singing a widower's song in Malayalam. I am reaching for your hair. Be ribboned of water. Water is death. Water has taken you in its own grip. So I am reaching for your hair which is be ribboned of water. When the starlings return to the streets of Manhattan, wake me. And there is actually an address to Aga Khan. When the starlings return to the streets of Manhattan, wake me. Till then I a man unmanned of water. Because till then I am a man who is unmanned of water. In the almanac of rain, you will find all my lines, each rhyme and refrain, each ampersand of water. All these lines that I am creating, composing one day or the other, it will become only a part of water. Jeet, meet Sahid. Sahid actually uh, means beloved, love. Meet Sahid, your guide to the future. He will teach you to play a baby grand of water. So in this entire poem, you can find how uh, Jeet Thail gives a new meaning and tries every now and then to use, uh, to make use of the word uh, water in a very metaphoric sense. Having discussed uh, the poetic over of Jeet Thail, my dear friends, uh, because uh, it is very difficult to discuss a poet of Jeet Thail's nature in only in these uh, 30 minutes. But then uh, time as I have always been saying is a sort of constraint. So let us very quickly take some of the critical comments about uh, Jeet Thail. As uh, one of uh, the fellow uh, poets and the, another contemporary poet Arundhati Subramaniam says, Thail's poetry leaves the readers with a sense of danger, of language tittering wildly on the edge of some precipice between centuries, between continents, between flittingly improvised realms, suspended somewhere between history and invention, reality and nowhereness. At the same time, Bruce King uh, finds in Thail a very powerful voice and the language being very dense because it is full of allusions. It makes me think even work to understand his poetry. So many people consider Thiel's poetry to be very difficult. But Thiel's language is very simple even though it uh, might contain so many allusions. Uh, Keki Darubala, one of the uh, major voices of Indian English poetry uh, says, Thiel writes controlled verse, well crafted, never obscure. And towards the end we can take one more comment that is of Philip 
Nikolaev who says, Thiel's poems refract his vibrant, unique and far-flung experience through the prism of tremendous lyric intellect. My dear friends, uh, Thiel's world is vast. Thiel's world has different sorts of poetic tinges, but then uh, there are times when one feels one's faith shaken and it is actually time that we summed up Thiel's world with some of the beautiful lines which uh, uh, Thiel actually wrote in one of the poems entitled Found Poem and this shows that despite all the hurdles, despite all sorts of obstacles, there is at least one faith that always keeps you intact. And what is it? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in still waters. He leads me to green pastures. He restores my soul and helps me walk in the path of righteousness for his own sake. And ye, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. He comforts me with his staff and rod, provides me with wine and bread. In the presence of mine enemy, goodness and mercy enter me. You anoint me with oil, my cup overflows, you lift me up. And through this, it appears, Thyle also was constantly struggling uh, to find a sort of faith. And ultimately, he has been able to find a faith, and that is the faith of the Lord which always keeps him intact. My dear friends, I think a poet when writes, writes all sorts of things, but ultimately a poet always struggles with a sort of language. And in this case, Thiel did not have to struggle for language. Thiel had actually a sort of spontaneity. Thiel had actually a sort of musicality and the sort of natural flow that Thiel created in his poems will go a long way. With this, let me come to the end of today's talk. Thank you very much. I wish you all a very good day ahead.